tyranny always comes gift wrapped in safety. That's right. So this bill is wants to be part of what's called the Pandemic Prevention and Preparedness Act. So they're doing this bill in order to prepare for the next pandemic, like they almost know it's coming, right? So this enactment enacts the Pandemic Prevention and Preparedness Act to require the Minister of Health to establish in consultation with other ministers a pandemic prevention and preparedness plan, which is to include information provided by those ministers. Okay. Um, it amends the Department of Health Act to provide that the Minister of Health must appoint a national pandemic prevention and preparedness coordinator from among the officials of the Public Health Agency of Canada to coordinate activities under the Pandemic Prevention and Preparedness Act. Whatever. They're just, we're, we're creating literature to give rules to you for our next pandemic. But here's where it gets a little more interesting. The Pandemic Prevention and Preparedness Plan must include to regulate commercial activities that can contribute to pandemic risk, including industrial animal agriculture. They give that as a specific mm. example. Right. Okay. So next is to promote commercial activities that can help reduce pandemic risk, including the production of alternative proteins. So suppressing animal agriculture and uplifting either vegetable uh, proteins uh, and crickets or bugs bugs or, or frankenfood or frankenfood which isn't even a uh, right so you're not going to get the food synergy yeah um, we talked about the anti-nutrients well you just say we kind of that, that wasn't a main point for the plants actually but for bugs that's <laughs> they have defense mechanisms well, they, they ha yeah and they just there's just weird thing like <laughs> yeah just weird well. compounds in bugs that i uh, you, you can see, or you can imagine, or not good for you. There's a couple of, for, for sure. I don't have the names of them. Yeah, that's almost. Down. It's just like your human right to. Yes, I'll say it. It's your human right to eat meat. Like we've been hunting and fishing since we we were able to. Right. Right. Have the choice at least. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then it goes on to further say to completely phase out commercial activities that disproportionately contribute to pandemic risk, including activities that involve high-risk species, i.e. meat. Right. Right? Bird flu, cow disease, whatever. Right. So it's interesting because when I brought these books, um, you know, I thought I was going to talk much more, like refer to the sacred cow much more, which I still uh, do, especially for learning some yeah. of the finer points and having references <laughs> like today and how this is looped in with the pandemic stuff. Yeah. Um, actually, that's his Can You Catch a Cold and looking at um, how things really uh, occur and what you might think is happening is not happening or yeah. uh, like that one is much more <laughs> right. on, on, on point for today. But uh, yeah, well, continue with yeah, their continue. paragraphs. Yeah. <laughs> um, they want to use a multi-sectoral and disciplinary collaborative approach known as a one health approach that focuses on the human animal plant and, and ecosystem health and welfare interface. Um, so they want to use an approach, I guess, to redefine what a healthy ecosystem is and our place in it and animals places in it. Whereas I like, I think that book is probably the antithesis of what they uh, would say. Yeah. I'm pointing to the sacred cow book. And in that, that book, I think it, it tells how cows, like why they were worshipped in certain societies, because they are literally the epicenter of the health of the land and the people. Right. And and it doesn't describe, that's when I was listening about this bill on, um, there's another podcast called Clyde Do Something. The guy who's more of an expert in this sort of thing says, this this bill is just so broad. Hmm. Like there's no real definitions. He's like, how has it gotten through? Because they could define that as anything they want. Right. Um, oh, yeah. And my favorite one, right? Uh, this bill also has to take into account the best scientific information available. <laughs> And we're talking about how they're redefining science. You're saying they don't even do the, the true scientific method. Um, 
no, what they say is sci- it's not the they're not following the scientific method. So first, science has limitations, but what they're doing, it's not even science. They're not following the scientific no. method. They don't come up with a hypothesis and test it. it they're they're right. just they're and just saying what they want to say. Right. <laughs> test it, and then it it needs to be uh, be able to be retested and proven. Um, separately uh, refined and correct. Yes. Right. Yes. And and recreated. Uh, but, but even in the scientific method, you have to have you know, uh, if you look at experiments, you have to have a control group, and you have to. Yeah. Um, like the, the, there's all these other elements. Yeah. But th- they're just they're not doing any. No. <laughs> of anything. No. <laughs> and uh, again, I said it before, but uh, it's Jeffrey Smith when he did. Um, I what's the name of that one? It's like Monsanto versus the world or something. Right. Like yes. That. Yeah. And he described. GMO science as no. having bad science down to a science. Like they've got their version right. of science, and it's so calculated and everything. And to people who don't, uh, that aren't scientists, and myself included, but they can make any argument sound convincing if it goes over your head. Right. You know what I mean. Right. Because you don't, I don't even know how to challenge that. Is what the general public will will say. Yeah. And of course, there's, there's the just implicit faith right. that anything the government does is good for us. So how to be how to be how to be liars and manipulators. Yeah. They, have, they, have, they have a they have kind of that down to a, oh, the, a that's science. The, down to a science too. <laughs> uh, and then lastly, this bill has to take into account the recommendations made by the advisory committee following its review of the response of the coronavirus disease of twenty nineteen uh, pandemic in Canada. So it's all going to be uh, based around um, fear, um, disease, yeah, all that stuff. So it's basically going to be saying, well, if we don't do this, you know, you're all going to get well, sick. And for the greater good. Always for the greater good. And getting if, back to what I said, tyranny always comes gift wrapped in safety. It always does. Yes. And if you let someone or institution, if you let them take away your rights and freedoms, for the reason of an emergency, then they'll just manufacture an emergency. And then even when they manufacture an emergency, even when they manufacture an emergency, yeah. man, at least in the old days, they had to put in some effort. Now there's like, now they just kind of say it. Yeah. <laughs> they, like, they say it on paper. Oh, well, there's an emergency because, uh, yeah. Yeah. Or they, they do what, whatever, some bogus test or they just, I don't know, they just have to have a press conference and say it. That's it. <laughs> like there doesn't have to be no. anything anymore. No. And then it's just invoked. So ridiculous. Invoke an act or an order or whatever. Yeah. Anyways. Um, I think that's it. Did you want to add anything else? With the bill, I just wanted to bring it to light that that is a thing that's happening. And anyone who's listening should look into that. Yeah. You can always write to your MP or whatever they tell you to do, but you always vote with your dollars. So the Similar playbooks to, I mean, I guess in the World War Two, maybe one, but it was, it was how, their control mechanism then was food rationing. Food rationing, yes. Oh, we have to do this or that for the troops. So, and of course, we need meat for the troops. Hey, if, if meat was so bad, why is it that meat, the, the troops get the priority, right? But anyways. Oh, because apparently our, our physiology <laughs> has changed in 100 years. Oh, now it's bad for us. Yeah, so there's a food, but this is still, this is just food rationing, but now instead of... Um, having to cut back for the troops it's oh it's because it's dirty or it's yeah. dangerous or it's going to lead <laughs> yeah exactly right to, to some uh, whatever they they say it's going to lead to yeah uh, so the onus like it's 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 on us right um you know something i've got to get into more is yeah growing my own food because right now i buy but at least even though i buy what do you support right and i support meat yeah. <laughs> and, well, and, and farmers uh yeah. or ordering from you know direct from farmers and getting the yeah. you know, the quarter cows and half yeah. cows well, that doesn't have to be that but there's what what can we do to support well, that's 90 percent of what you eat then <laughs> that's probably a yes. good idea <laughs> right um yeah i i think i think is that it are we good i think that's it it's just that's- uh you know just say no Right. Just say no, yeah, if, if the next BS. If someone tells you to close down or stop doing something, yeah, just, don't, yeah, just, just don't, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> if, when, if it ever came down to nuts and bolts and uh, <laughs> you just just do the right thing. Yeah, or you're right, so say don't do, right, do the right thing. Do the right thing, Yeah. right? I don't think on uh, anyone's deathbed they're going to be, I wish I complied more with false 
pandemics and false well, well, I guess this is where orders, you know, kind of that legal stuff we look at sometime or the lawful stuff. Yeah. It's if someone says something, say, oh, I'd be happy to comply if you can show me X, Y, Z yeah. and then list your criteria. Can you show me where this yeah. has been validated? Can you show me like there's, there's yeah. elements like that? So if something ever happens, we can always do a, a follow up and a stay tuned and, and have some specifics there. Yeah, perfect. But, at least it's it's in the time being it's you know food for thought. It is food for thought, <laughs> literally. Uh, so where can people find you? Because um, you also you do online um, programs or you do uh, virtual. I don't know if you still do that. I saw you doing that a little while ago. Yeah, if, if they went to my yourmissinglink.ca website, you would contact Tim at yourmissinglink.ca. Okay. But, but but even through the contact form at uh, functional, at strength, functional strength. And, yeah, yeah. You'll, and. You'll find me here like where I am right now. Right. So that's, that's the Functional Strength Training Center in Burlington, Ontario, because I'm sure there's lots of gyms around the world that are called Functional Strength. But no. That's, that's it. <laughs> We're the only one. Um, so that's it. So thanks, everyone, for listening. Um, any questions, please leave a comment because I'll uh, try to answer them um, or if you're listening. And I think that's going to be it for us till next time. Remember, stay strong and free. That's it. That's it. Thanks. Later, buddy. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching or listening. If you did like the content, please hit subscribe so that we can create more content like this. You can check out all of my strength training programs and supplements at thenaturalalpha.com. Stay strong and free.